the Chase Thomas podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. It's about the room in 2024, how it'll continue to evolve, um, new face who might come on this year that ball fans don't already know, and then your biggest question mark for this linebacker room in 2024. My biggest, uh, that's a lot. Um, okay, what I like is the upside um, because Arian Carter. You know, we everybody was so high on Arian Carter last year, and he had moments, but obviously the injury hampered his season early, and it didn't really feel like he splashed all that much early on. It felt like there was a little bit of freshman growing pains, so he could have a breakout season as a sophomore. T. Lander and Spurts last year was great, and he could take a step, and those two guys could be absolute dudes at the linebacker spot. I know we mentioned or talked about Keenan Pilly last week a little bit where or maybe it was on our RT iPod, actually, Ryan, where you were saying that Keenan Pilly is a little bit of an unknown for this Tennessee team um, just because, you know, he's coming off of injury. He's only played one game in a ball uniform, but I, I like, I think Keenan Pilly is safe and I like what he brings for this defense. I do think he's one of the most important players on this defense, probably second behind James Pierce. So he's a big player for Tennessee this year. And I, I think Keenan Pilly is going to have a big season, but, with the upside of Carter and T-Lander, I like, you know, a name that might come on that, you know, maybe not a lot of people know. I, th I think T-Lander would be the answer to that because in reality, a lot of just not diehard fans probably aren't th all that familiar with Jeremiah T-Lander, probably a little more familiar with Aaron Carter, had more snaps, or at least had more important snaps last year. And, you know, is an in-state kid. So T-Lander would be my answer to that. And also probably the answer to the whole equation because, feels like those sophomore linebackers taking a big step could really make this room oh, very dangerous. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. What about what about you, Ryan? Yeah, I know. I think Jack hit the nail on the head. You have to like the the sophomore talent and the un underclassmen talent. You know, I, what I feel good about is I, I feel like Tennessee's, those guys are going to, linebackers are going to be good against the run, like especially mm -hmm. between the tackles. I worry... Less about them, you know, playing sideline to sideline, but just in pass coverage. It's a lot of big physical guys. Uh, I mean, you think of the top to me, the top three are all guys I think of as, if not between the tackler tackles, at least run defense guys. So, is there a step for a guy like Caleb Perry? Does Jalen Smith kind of come out of the woodwork in his sophomore season? You know, those are guys that just from a build standpoint, and obviously Caleb Perry, I think last year was in a lot of their third down packages as a linebacker. Um, do those guys take a step and, and become, in Caleb Perry's standpoint, a little bit more of an every down player uh, who can play in pass defense pretty well? Or Jalen Smith? I mean, that would just have to be a pretty wild second year yeah. jump in the program for him to become that guy. But do one of those guys do it? And then, you know, a guy that I I really love just from having watched him a few times in high school is Edwin Spillman, uh, the freshman. You know, it's hard. I say all that, and he's he's another one of those between the tackle guys, or at least run run defense guys, and, and he's a beast. I mean, just from a, he was a tackling machine, playing in you know probably the best uh, classification in, in the state of Tennessee at Lipscomb, the the biggest private school classification. So I think he's a really good player. To see a guy that finds a role in his freshman season, I kind of lean no because it just feels like he's a lot like those guys that are at the top of the room. Um, but but he's one that at least in the long term, I, I'm really excited for. Yeah, and I think Edwin is probably going to be more of a special teams guy. So I think a lot of fans yeah. know Edwin and just what he did at Lipscomb and just obviously his brother um, in the room and the Spillman family. But he's someone that I'm excited about seeing because I think he popped also in the spring game. I remember him having a couple of big hits in that one. Like, yeah, I did. think Edwin Spillman's going to be a dude, but it's just freshmen, generally speaking, just don't play. Um, and, and in terms of just real rotations, I mean, Aaron Carter uh, played a little bit last year and obviously Ryan John Marie really like to rotate but we just don't know if William Inge just going to follow that same path is William Inge just going to only trust three and that's just how it's going to be like he's going to rotate a little bit between T Lander Carter and Peely or does he have that same um, outlook that uh, Brian John Marie had in terms of getting as many guys in the fold and do we see a lot of Caleb Perry do we see a lot of um, Jalen Smith who's kind of the forgotten linebacker out of Grayson um, does he factor in um, this fall? Because that would be helpful for Tennessee if uh, with uh, Elijah Herring gone. Like it's not as big of a loss, I think, as a lot of national folks saw because they just saw leading tackler for Elijah. But he would have played. He would have been a rotation guy um, in this group, and I think Tennessee probably still would have like he would have been an asset uh, to this linebacker room. He would have helped things. But you also have guys behind him um, that can absolutely still factor in and uh, come on. I mean, Cale Perry's got a different number, so folks won't. Uh, I think he's like eight now, I want to say. Is it Cale Perry Pretty eight? sure. 
Yeah. So he's flipped. Uh, anybody else in that room is a different number? Do we know that we'll play? I don't know. I'll stop in my head. Aaron Carter's still seven. T Lander's 22. Yeah, T Lander's 22. Peely's 11. 11. I think that's uh, it. Yeah, that's probably it. Jalen Smith, I think, is 38. It's uh, 39. 39. 39. There you go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, okay. I think linebacker is going to be fine. Um, but I do think to because you right now they've only got Christian Gas in this class. Um, we'll see if Perlotti or another linebacker winds up. But I think it's kind of a sneaky, important one for recruiting this year for linebacker because I think they need to know like how much they'll have to go in the portal next off season. How much do they already? How much do they trust? Because I think Caleb Perry's out of eligibility after this year too, right? Isn't Perry gone? No, he's, he's, not, he's, he's just a junior. I think. Okay, is he, I thought he was a senior. Okay, he came in the um, same class as Herring, I believe. Okay, so you still have Perry for one more year, but you really want to see something from, I think, Jalen Smith, too. Like, because Peely is going to be gone. I think the expectation is probably that it will be T Lander um, if he can handle uh, Mike and it will be him and Arian next year. But I think you you need to see something there. Jordan Burns, freshman, we'll see what he looks like. Four star kid out of uh, Pace Academy um, back in Atlanta. Um, but I don't know. I think it will be interesting to monitor the rotations and which of these young guys and some of these guys who've been in the program for a little bit, like Jalen Smith, if they can factor in um, this fall, because uh, I think they'll show a lot in terms of what Tennessee has to do on the recruiting trail and in the portal um, this offseason. Switching gears here a little bit. I think fans might not be ready for this because they've circled, um, obviously, the Oklahoma game and why that's so important, Ryan. But this is something that I, I just I can't shake because we've seen three years of Heupel's Tennessee teams on the road in the SEC and it's we've like, had some good wins obviously the LSU win on the road is probably the best win uh SEC road win for Heupel in the in his time at, on Rocky Top but by and large it's a 50-50 gambit um for this group on the road and winning on the road in the SEC is extremely difficult Tennessee has a weird schedule in that they don't play an important SEC game until mid-October at home and we know that they've only lost one home game in the last two years like and that was to um, arguably the best program in the country right now in Georgia. It's an asset, and Hypo has protected home field really well. But they have to go to Oklahoma, and they have to go to... Nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas podcast. Hell yeah.